video band here at the And this is a UC design to get the point of the project on So we are the uh, UC Design Video Bands Calculator team. My name is Chris Ribble. This is Matt Maddings, uh, Justin Lenoff, and Albert Champ. Um, so on our project, I work on the calculation for the our video family calculation class. Matt works on um, NatLab and data analysis scripts. Justin worked on data capture and uh, linear approximations for some, uh, some equations. Um, Albert worked on data capture and the user interface for our community. So the problem that Cisco wanted to solve is they need to be able to calculate um, how much a video phone bandwidth is required on each link in a hub and spoke network solve. So currently they have a calculator that can do voice and calculations and can do uh, simple calculations over a single link, but it doesn't really handle a hub and spoke topology and it doesn't handle video. So our goal was to extend their existing calculator to uh, handle video and also to handle a true hub and spoke network topology. So um, last semester we worked on capturing data and uh, analyzing that data to determine uh, various statistics about it. So one of the things that we determined was for each phone type and data rate combination, we determined a threshold above which the instantaneous bandwidth will only peak <laughs> once every two or three minutes. Um, we did uh, analysis of uh, the PDF, the probability uh, distribution of the instantaneous bandwidths. And uh, based on that information, Cisco actually discovered that there was a way that we could optimize some of their phone firmware. So this semester we actually recaptured the data with that new firmware and went through and uh, we used MATLAB to simulate statistically multiplexing multiple channels of data together to determine how quickly the, uh, the bandwidth of the band channel will drop as you actually add more channels multiplex together. Uh, the tool that we created is uh, used as uh, implemented in Java Apple. Um, it uses the computer values for the bandwidth thresholds and also for the statistical multiplexing. You can actually see a graph of the statistical multiplexing behind me that shows how the, how the bandwidth required per channel is uh, increased as you add channels. So our tool uses these, these values. Um, our tool implements a true hub and spoke topology so that um, calls from each branch are distributed to the various links as they would be in a real uh, hub and spoke network. Um, our tool uses the Erlang B formula to calculate the number of channels needed on each link. And from there, we can extrapolate how much bandwidth is needed per link. Um, our tool allows a user to select uh, phone type, data, nominal data rate, number of users, uh, the ZR call average, active call holding time, and outbound call probability. They can add any number of branches that they want to complete branches. As they make changes, the, um, the bandwidth for each link and the trunking bandwidth are updated in real time. We also built uh, validation tests in JUnit, so we can do unit testing, and we also have an event simulator that can take the results from the bandwidth calculator and then run an actual simulation over each link and determine if our results are correct in terms of blocking probability. Um, we do have, do have the tools that have outside of JUnit, and I encourage everyone to come by and have a look. Um, any questions? Yes? Is this a planning tool, or is this like a real-time uh, so, it is a planning tool. It's used so that whenever um, they want to do a new deployment for a customer, they can say, here's how many users you have, here's the active call holding time, here's the type of data you use in the data rate, and we can say, yes, given this topology, here's exactly how much bandwidth you need on each link. And if you have that much bandwidth, then giving, given a 1% block probability or whatever probability you are, um, your calls will go through. Um, they'll only be blocked with that block probability. Algorithms were, were written and how many were both like as a toolkit? So um, all of the algorithms are ones that we wrote. Um, the, with one exception, we ended up using an existing algorithm they have for the early B uh, computation because it was slightly more efficient than the one that we wrote. So we used the one that's just for that, but everything else we wrote ourselves. In your validation testing, were you pulling uh, statistics off of a router, a switch, a server, or was it just from a simple? Uh, so, like, so we have an event simulator that we created, and it uses a uh, negative exponential, essentially a Poisson arrival process, um, to simulate arrivals of calls. 
um, and then we keep track of how much is used on each link. So what we're doing is we're taking the bandwidth value that the calculator gave us and taking that same number of users and taking that bandwidth value, putting it into the event simulator, and then letting it run until it's run for like two weeks of simulated time. When it gets done, it knows how many calls were blocked, and that's how you know you're blocking the problem. And how close were your, was your calculator to the actual event? Um, it depends on the data rate, and it also depends on a couple other things because of the fact that the channel is a, is a, is a discrete amount. Um, but it was anywhere from within about 1% to within about 15%. What was the second number? 15. But it's usually closer to 1. How often did you meet with your uh, Cisco representative, and uh, what was the type of feedback they gave you during this semester? So we met with them um, once every two weeks. Uh, they gave us continual feedback about different features that they wanted. Um, we reviewed the algorithms with them to make sure that they, that they worked correctly. Um, and there were a few places where we had done things wrong, <laughs> they told us, and so we did Were there things that you, were able, you weren't able to, to deliver to them uh, during the two semester events? So there was, there was one stretch goal that they had said would be nice if we could do it. Um, we also wanted to possibly do an MPLS uh, topology instead of just heaven spoke, but uh, there just wasn't enough time to also complete that as well. And, and were they happy with your with your final solution? They they seemed pretty happy the last time we met them. Yes. That's great. Is it, were you using variable bit rates or was it a constant bit rate? Um, so some, the codex on one of the phones actually is a variable bit rate, um, and so it varies based on the amount of motion that's, that's happening. Um, what we did was uh, that's kind of taken into account with the statistical multiplexing. If you have times where, where one phone is sending slightly lower and another one is sending higher, um, that's in a way taken into account by, by that. Uh, and the statistical multiplexing uh, scales how much bandwidth is required. So if you have you know, 10 phones and uh, only half of them were peaking at that moment, then overall um, you can assume that the peak per phone is lower. Thank you very much.